Aaron, after you hit 61 in Toronto, you said that it was a relief to have that past you. How much of a relief is this one? Oh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a big relief. You know, I think everybody can finally sit down in their seats and watch the ball game. You know, it's, um, no, it's been a, been a fun ride so far. You know, getting a chance to do this, you know, with the team we got, the guys surrounding me, you know, the constant support, you know, from my family who's been with me there, you know, through this whole thing is, um, it's, it's been a, it's been a great honor, you know, and also, you know, Roger Maris Jr., you know, him and his family, you know, supporting and being along for the ride too, you know, a lot of thanks and, um, Congratulations to them too for their constant support through this whole process. Because I know it's a it's a tough situation. You know your your dad's legacy, and you want to uphold that. But you know, getting a chance to to meet their family, they're wonderful people, and you know, getting a chance to you know have my name next to you know someone as great as Roger Maris, Babe Ruth, those guys is incredible. Aaron, were you looking at the schedule at all and knowing that there was only a couple of games left, wondering if, if you were going to get that number 62? Not really. Um, the games started to go a little faster. You know, usually the games kind of drag on. You're locked down your bats on defense and stuff like that. But I can't lie, the past couple of games, I'd look up and it's the seventh inning. And I'm like, dang, I only got one more at bat. I better, you know, we got we to gotta figure this out. But, um, you know, I really never try to look at the schedule because then I think I start pressing a little bit and, you know, feel a little pr bit of pressure. But, you know, I just try to take it one day at a time and, you know, say a prayer, go out there and just try to play my game. And, um, you know, for me, I, you know, I never tried to focus on the number, never tried to focus on going out there and doing it. Just go out there and play my game. And, you know, if, if I'm good enough and God willing, it'll, it'll happen. So, um, nothing. Just having that type of faith, I think, kind of helped me out through this whole whole process. Brian up in the front on the right. Aaron, that moment when you're rounding the bases and you see your entire team has come out of the dugout and they're waiting for you at home plate, what was that like for you? What's going through your mind there? Uh, pretty, pretty surreal. Um, just like in Toronto, it was pretty, pretty awesome, you know, having their support. But I think in Texas, I think they were a little more excited, you know, you know they can finally, because it was... <laughs> At home, you know, if I look up, I, I look right into our dugout so I can see all the guys just sitting there at the top stuff waiting for this to happen. And, you know, here on the road, they were behind me. So I didn't I didn't see the 40 plus people sitting there in the dugout. So I think, you know, finally seeing them run out in the field, you know, get a chance to hug them all. They're saying congratulations. You know, that's that's what it's about for me. You know, those those guys are grinding with me every single day. And they've been along this journey, you know, through the ups and downs and getting a chance to share that moment with them on the field was was pretty special, that's for sure. Who else? Christy. Aaron, in the first game, it looked like you were a little frustrated after the pop-up. How did you feel after that first game and going into this game? And also, will you play tomorrow? Yeah, I was frustrated because I haven't, I wasn't helping the team out. You know, I had a couple bad at bats. You know, swinging at some bad pitches, missing my pitch. You know, so I was upset that, you know, I was the leadoff guy. I got to get on base and. You know, I hadn't, <laughs> hadn't been doing that. You know, the Rangers, you know, they were coming after me and you know, they were attacking me and, you know, I just didn't put any good swings on it. So I was pretty pretty upset at myself. You know, I was supposed to be a table setter. Um, and tomorrow I'm, I'm hoping to play. You know, we got we got one more game. We'll, we'll, see, what, uh, we'll see what Skip has to say about that. But, uh, you know, I'm hoping to be in there. Yeah, Aaron, what did you know about uh, Jose Tinoco? I, I know he has a nasty sinker and a nasty slider. You know, I wasn't, you know, I know we were kind of waiting to hear who the starter of game two was going to be. And when I heard it was him, you know, I saw what he did the night before. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> this isn't a good matchup to, to start the game off with a guy with, you know, high velocity like that and a good, good off speed pitch. Um, you know, so I think, you know, going into it, I think that kind of helped me relax. Like, hey, this, this is a good pitcher. Let me just go up there and l l let's see what happens. And, um, I was I was able to get one over the heart of the plate and try to put a good swing on it and um, just give us an early lead. Aaron, when you look at the last couple of weeks when it really became a home run chase, what do you think you will remember most about this experience? The fans, you know, the fans at home, the fans on the road. 
you know, the constant support, you know, seeing Yankee Stadium on their feet for every single at bat, you know, they're booing pitchers for throwing balls, you know, which I've never, never seen before. And, you know, I think I got a base hit the other night and I was getting booed for a single, you know, it's just, you know, little moments like that you look back on, and, you know, would have been great to do it at Yankee Stadium in front of our home fans. But I know a lot of, you know, Yankee fans, they travel, they travel well. And there's a lot of Yankee fans here tonight and, you know, getting a chance to share that experience with the fans. And, you know, that, that's, that's what it's about for me. Right here. Aaron, were you able to get the ball back? Not yet. I, I don't know where it's at. So, you know, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see what happens with that. It'd be, it'd be great to get it back, but, you know, it's, that's a souvenir for a fan. So, you know, they made a great catch out there, and, you know, they got every right to it. Aaron, at any point during this, did you feel stress, pressure, you know, th that you had to get this done? You know, it, it's tough to say, you know, because, you know, every game is stressful. You know, I've, I kind of felt bad for my teammates because every, like I said, like every single at bat, I got teammates, you know, stacked up. They're on top of the step, you know, waiting for me to do this. And, you know, I'd hit a double or I'd, hit, I'd walk or I'd do something. You know, I kind of felt like I was letting them down, you know. So, and even the fans, every, all the fans that were packed out Yankee Stadium, the fans that came here these past two games, you know, I felt like I let them down. When if I had a two for four game or, a, you know, one for two game with a couple walks, I felt like I was letting them down. So, you know, I never, I never tried to think about it as pressure. You know, I tried to enjoy every single moment and, you know, not really think about, you know, hey, hey, they, hey they're all on the feet for you to go see you hit a home run. I try to think about, hey, they're, they're here to see an exciting ball game and see something special. So, you know, just having that mindset kind of helped me, you know, stay pretty calm. But, um, you know, there's, there's definitely a little pressure in there, but, you know, you try not, you just try to block that out. Take a couple more right here. Aaron. So, Aaron, you talked about your family. You talked about your teammates, but a lot of players around baseball, especially some of the higher name players, some of the more marquee players, they're excited about this. And they tweeted out, and obviously you probably haven't seen that part yet, but just seeing players around baseball talk about this and be excited for you, what do you think about that? It's, it's incredible. You know, I think that's one of the biggest honors is any, any compliment from your peers. You know, the guys that are out there grinding just like you are on a daily basis, they know how hard this game is. They know how hard it is to show up and post every single night, you know, so to hear or for them to tweet things out, say things like that, that's, there, there's no higher honor, you know, in, in my book, you know. That's, that's what it's always been about for me is my teammates and even my peers and, you know, the respect I have for other players around the league, you know, to get that, you know, same respect back. That's, you know, it's. Uh, it, it gives you chills, to be honest. <laughs> Take the last three right here. Aaron, as your number was growing higher and higher, you kept saying, numbers don't matter, I'm worried about the wins. Was, was there a time, maybe home or at some point, you just said to yourself, wow, uh, this is, I, I could do this? Was there a moment? Well, I, I think going into the every year, you know, every season, you write down goals, you have, you know, stuff you want to accomplish, you know. So um, every year, I think I can, you know, go out there and hit 70 homers or, you know, have the confidence and faith to go out there and try to do something special for the team. Um, but when you're in the process, that's that's the fun part. You don't you don't think about that. You're just you're so locked in on the daily grind that, you know, the numbers and all that kind of stuff. It's it's just a, it's just a wash. You just. For me, I, I enjoy the, the daily grind of, you know, working at bat and, you know, getting a base hit to help the team or driving an RBI, the grind of, you know, having a tough day at the plate where you're 0 for 4 and things aren't going your way. And, you know, hey, I got, guess what? I got I to gotta wake up and show up tomorrow because I got a day game here in a couple hours. So that for me, you know, I just, I just had fun, you know, getting locked in on that process. Uh, right here, Bob. And when you hit the, uh, the ball left your bat, do you know it was gone for sure if you wondered if it was going to be high enough? I had a good feeling off the bat. You know, I haven't played too many games here at the new park. I know the old park, the ball really, the ball flew out of here. So I knew I had a good chance at the old park. But here, you never know. But I had a, I had a good feeling off the bat. You know, I just didn't know where it was going to land or what it was going to hit. And, you know, there's a good sense of relief once it, I saw it land in that fan's glove. And, you know, we're up one nothing, And, you know, now 
now a chance to see Garrett go out there and break another record. So um, I was I had a good feeling off the bat. And when it went out, what was your when you strolled the bases? What were you thinking? What was going through your mind? I just thinking of my wife, thinking of my family. You know, my teammates. You know, just the fans. Like that was just. All that was kind of running through my head, you know, just the constant support I've gotten through this whole process of this whole year, you know, from them especially. And, you know, it's, that's, that's all I really, really running through my head. And then you know, I was looking forward to getting the dugout and going back on defense to watch Garrett go out there and break a record. So it, uh, I, I had quite a few emotions kind of going there. Chris? <clears throat> It's only been a few hours, but have you been able to fully process the historical significance of this home run? Oh, not yet. It's uh, in my book. It's just another day. You know, I wish we would have got the win. I would have made it a little sweeter for me and Garrett. I think, but you know, that's that's what we got tonight for. You know, to kind of soak it in and soak in the moment, soak in the moment with my family, and and then uh, get ready for the game tomorrow. I, th I think I think it really won't. It won't seek in until you know the off season after the postseason, all that kind of stuff happens because that's still you know our main goal and our main focus. So I think once we get past all that and we'll go out there and do our job, then we can kind of soak it all in. What's up? What's up? My name is Spike Lee. I'm here, with my man O'Neill. We're at Madison Square Garden, the world's most famous arena in Weber York. The New York Knickerbockers are playing the world champion, Golden State Warriors. And right now, there goes Steph Curry doing his drill. 